Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. Here is everything you need to know about reflection and indirect lighting in Blender EV. While Cycle will by default offer super realistic reflections and indirect lighting, it becomes way more tricky with Blender's real-time engine EV. The first thing you may want to do, beyond enabling ambient occlusion and bloom for better looking, might be to enable screen space reflections. We instantly get reflection, but they are not truly really accurate. When this option is disabled, the only thing that gets reflected on any object is the environment lighting, often associated to an HDRI environment texture. The principle of screen space reflection is pretty simple. When we activate it, we do see a reflection that are more or less accurate. But as soon as the object that is supposed to be reflected leaves the screen space, it does disappear from any reflections. Since those reflections are generated by what's viewed by the camera, since the orange sphere occludes the background that gets reflected on the ground, it generates those weird artifacts that are direct reflection of the environment. If I was to add some kind of blue column in the background, you can see that as soon as the sphere is in front, it seems to crop its reflection. Another example here where we have this orange surface of the cube reflecting on this chrome sphere, but as soon as this surface is no longer on the screen space, it doesn't reflect on the chrome sphere anymore. One way to fix this issue is to use a reflection prop. Currently, my screen space reflection are still enabled. I will disable them later on. To create this new probe, I will press Shift A, go to Light Probe, and add a reflection cube map. You can use a spherical projection that is ideal for outdoor environments, or you can use a box that is ideal for interiors. I will use the box shape for the sake of this demonstration and scale it a bit so that all my objects are inside it. To use this reflection probe, we currently need to bake its cube map. To do so, we will go into the rendering option, and we can click Indirect Lighting or Bake Cube Map Only. It will take a few seconds to process, and now you can see I have totally different reflection on my sphere. I will disable screen space reflections, and now as I zoom in, we can clearly see the reflection of the objects surrounding our chrome sphere appearing on the surface of the sphere. Then there are kind of create a local environment map from the center of our probe. So if I bake again this cube map with the chrome sphere inside of it, you will see that the chrome sphere is reflecting itself. And we get a dark sphere reflected on our chrome sphere, since indirect lightning doesn't get baked. If I move the sphere out of the probe boundaries, we will lose the reflections. You can get better reflection increasing the cube map size. Basically, it's the size of the cube map texture generated. In the viewport display option of the prop properties, you can display the influence area. An object needs to be in this area to receive the reflections, and you can change its size here. The clipping option is super important as it lets you know the range in which you're capturing the reflection for the reflection probe. If I increase the clipping start and hand, and it now only includes the background and the orange sphere, as I now rebake the reflections, the blue cube doesn't appear on our chrome sphere anymore. The blue cube and the rocks were out of the boundaries of the baking. If I reduce the clipping start so that it's closer to our chrome sphere and I bake the map again, I'm now able to see the blue cube being reflected onto my chrome sphere. If I reduce the clip end to a point where the orange sphere is not included anymore, it won't get reflected onto our chrome sphere. One big downside of cube maps is the fact that they are static. So if I move the blue cube, the reflection doesn't move. The cube map is a snapshot of the environment the moment you bake those reflections. So it won't work with animated objects. If you add a collection to the visible collection, only the object included in this collection will be baked to the reflection cube map. The subject will be back to the cube map along with the environment lighting. You may not want to change the parallax option since it goes along with the shapes of your cube map, whether you're using a sphere or a box to bake or project your texture. You may want to keep the intensity to 1 since it will multiply the bake result accordingly. 
Increasing the intensity will basically increase the value of the baked reflection, and your reflection will emit more light than what they received. An intensity below 1 will darken the result. If you want to learn character creation, rigging and animation and take your skill to a professional level, you will find extensive and top-rated Blender courses on p2design.com. Hundreds of professionally edited videos shipped with all the models, rig and Blender files. Use the code P2Design to get 10% off on any of the courses. Back to our 3D scene, I removed the reflection probes and I will disable screen space reflections. I will now press Shift A and add a new light probe reflection plane. I will scale it so that it covers more surface, but as I do so, nothing happens. This is because the reflection probes will affect only the geometry that is included in this area of effect. To make it work on the ground, I need the ground surface to be bound to this area. As soon as I will push the probe down, we will see the reflection appearing on our ground plane. You can scale the probe to get reflection in the area you want. If I push it further down, the backside of the ground will be reflected on its surface. Think of the reflection probe as a camera filming along its normals. The result is then projected on any surface that is bound to the probe's limits. If the probe is pushed too far down, then it will see the back face of the ground. And this is what is going to be reflected. When screen space reflection is off, playing with the roughness of a surface will increase or decrease the intensity of the reflection, not its quality or sharpness. So basically it won't be physically correct or won't work with object materials that don't have a roughness close to zero. Another downside is that it won't work properly on curved objects as you need the normals of the object to be more or less aligned with the reflection probe's orientation. As the normals deviate, the object reflection will disappear. As you can see, it has some illumination, but it also has some real strength. First of all, the reflections are real-time, so it works with animated objects. So if you are walking on a scene where you have mirrors, that's the perfect fit. A simple plane with a roughness set to zero and a reflection probe will work. Note that you will have only direct reflection, you won't get the reflection of a reflection. Also, if you combine it with screen space reflection, you will be able to play on the roughness of the materials. The probe will allow you to get objects that are out of the screen to be reflected, while the screen space reflection will allow you to play with the roughness of the material and get reflection affected accordingly. As for the other probe, you can exclude or include any collection using the visibility options. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please subscribe, leave a like and a comment that will really help supporting the channel. When using Cycle, we get way more lighting information, especially indirect lighting. Here you can see all this green and orange emissive object does light the stone or our character. Also, any colored object will slightly color the surrounding objects. But when we switch back to EV, we do lose those indirect lighting information, leading to a poor and less believable render. This is where irradiance volume comes into play. It's a simple box made of multiple points arranged into a grid. You have to position it so that it binds all the objects you want to capture the indirect lighting from. Each of the little points in the grid will capture the lighting information in these specific positions. The more points you will have, the more accurate will be your indirect lighting bake. But as usual, the more memory it will be using. You can change the number of points or you can change the number of point or basically change the resolution of the irradiance volume in the irradiance properties under volume. Then back to our render properties, you go to indirect lightning and choose bake and direct lighting. Depending on the number of points, the complexity of your lighting and the performance of your hardware, Blender will take more or less time to perform the baking. Once done, you finally get indirect lighting on the different objects. But since those information are baked into the irradiance volume, moving an object won't change the indirect lighting. But if we add a new object and we move it into the space where we have this irradiance volume, it will get the lighting information from the irradiance volume. And so you will be able to see subtle variation of lighting upon the object. 
This is why we generally bake the irradiance volume onto static object. And then you may animate the object that comes into the environment. You can actually preview the baked and direct lightning on each point of the grid in the display options. It is displayed as a collection of white diffuse sphere influenced by the local indirect lighting. If I move an actual sphere close to one of those light probes, you can clearly see the influence of them on it. So if you have a lot of colorful objects in your scene, whether they are emitting light or not, the radiant volume will allow you to capture all those subtle and direct lighting informations. And it can drastically improve the quality of your render in EV, as usual, at the cost of performances. This is the end of this video, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you very very soon.